This is really Learning from History, Part 6. Uh, one to five are now on DVDs, if anybody's interested. But this adds on to the previous story, where I'm trying to present the skeleton, if you like, of our human history. And I hope to put a little bit more meat on it with this particular talk. So here we go. That is uh, a wonderful image of uh, Christian O'Brien and Barbara Joy, which is in the Telegraph, something like 1974, I think. That was his main uh, first really exciting thing, to find that there was a line, which he called Line A, from Hatfield Forest to Wandlebury, um, 26 megalithic miles, and markers precisely each megalithic mile. Um, didn't find all of them, but most of them. And it's a loxodrome, which is a curved surface on the line of the Earth, which is parallel to the meridian. And it's essential for what was called meridian astronomy, where astronomy first started. So in 2,500 BC, uh, the people living in East Anglia were clever enough to put that marker on the ground. And to do that, they must have known the exact dimensions of the Earth. The really exciting bit now is that this line points west of current due north. And I haven't checked it out yet, but it looks as though it could be pointing to the Hudson Bay uh, North Pole uh, before the Earth was shifted on its axis. And that is part of the story I'm going to tell and the consequences of that happening and how that has affected everything that has happened to us over the last 12,000 years. The second really important thing was to establish that there was a major observational astronomy university on Bodmin Moor with more stones moved than the Great Pyramid. And that was where Druids from all over Europe, uh, most of the known world, came to be taught observational astronomy. That's why we have such incredibly high standards of knowledge in these ancient times, because the traditions were carried down throughout the Druidic colleges and universities. These are the two key books. Some people are calling the genius of the few the new Bible because it really does give you the Bible story uh, in a far more sensible way, not about God in heaven, but about the bright ones, intelligent ones, the shining ones in the planted highlands. Um, it's full of, full of information, in particular an alternative translation of the Genesis text, which now makes sense, and also uh, in great detail the Sumerian uh, story, creation story, or story of the Garden of Eden, which is called, uh, uh, called Karsag, and it's the Karsag epics from the Nippa Library, which are crucial to our understanding of the past going back in time. The Shining Ones is the masterwork. They're all sold out. I hope later on in the year I'll be able to uh, do another print run, but that does depend on support for the DVDs and buying the genius of the few. There are the uh, part one, two, three, and four, um, and they all break down into component parts. There's some mixing between the two, but um, about 140 slides on each one. So there's packed full of information on a whole range of subjects. So anybody who I've spoken to quickly for or thrust too much at uh, can go back and look at that. Or also they can look at it too on the Holistic Channel. Um, and there's a card downstairs if you want to pick that up and simply look at it on your computer at home. But you won't get the quality and be able to do it as well as you would if you bought a DVD. Now, like every uh, aspect of history, particularly when we're looking at our history of our planet and the people on it, one of the key points we have to do is look at the big picture um, of our Milky Way galaxy uh, and our solar system. Uh, that's a wonderful image, and you can see there the sun um, just there. That's us. So even before you got up this morning, uh, uh, you were uh, lying on a large stone, which is traveling at 66,600 miles an hour um, through this extraordinary uh, area of uh, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, ducking and diving over time through these spiral arms. And that has a major impact on our climate, our weather, and everything that's happening here. And it's only this fantastic research in the last 10 years that should be able to understand that we go from dry periods uh, to wet periods to hot periods to cold periods, largely because of the impact of cosmic rays raining down upon us. 
I put this up because I think it's crucial we look at the size of the Sun, uh, Mercury, uh, Venus, the Earth, Mars and the other planets, particularly how close we are to Mars and the relationships between those two, which I'm going to touch on later. But if you think that CO2 here uh, is actually going to have any impact on what this chap's doing here, in my opinion, you're completely mad. But that's another story which I'm not going to get into at this moment. The issues about our extraordinary universe are that it needs 20, 30 uh, disciplinary skills to begin to understand what's happening, um, and, and in particular begin to look at what has happened. And this is the sun, solar activity, and how we're protected by the magnetic fields that we have, and also that um, go around our particular solar system. And here we have an outer boundary of the heliosphere here, which protects us from radiation from the rest of our galaxy. And it's very, very important to see here that that uh, particular boundary is weakening at the moment, shrinking and getting weaker. And that will have impacts on our weather uh, in the short and longer term, possibly. The one thing we're worried about in 2012 is this galactic alignment, and that could mean very fierce solar storm from the sun or something coming into our sun, making the sun very active for a short period of time, which will give us adverse conditions. That's what we've been warned about, not so much by the Mayans, but the Sumerians and the Egyptians uh, all are on the same tack. The teaching originally came from the land of Canaan to Samaria to the Mayans. And I'm going to show you all those links as we go through. Just some of the problems. There's a lovely image of Comet Hale Bop. That's an um, artist um, visualization of cometary debris, an actual event that took place over Chesapeake Bay. This is actually a lovely image, first time we've actually photographed a comet of this type in deep space, and that's due to come somewhere near us in about 2016, but I don't think it'll give us any trouble. That is the kind of what we call a dark comet, dark matter, which brightens up and flares as it comes through our atmosphere. That's what happened in Tugunskrun, Siberia, 2008, an area the size of Belgium was devastated. Uh, and there is uh, at least a 100 or a centennial risk of this kind of incident uh, uh, now and an increased risk as we go through the next 100 years. This is the work of Professor Victor Klub, uh, the top Oxford astrophysicist, and you can see here at these particular junctures and these dates, um, you have problems. We had problems around about 3,000, Big problems, 22,400. We had problems here again, 2020, 1300. These are all BC, 500 BC, um, 280 uh, BC AD, and then 1200. And we're going to run into more problems from the Torrid stream in the next 100 years. He was very worried and concerned about that and was pretty upset that nobody took him seriously. These are the impacts in recent historical times. There have been three Tugunska-type events, 1930, 35, and 47. And the two big ones I'm going to feature a little bit later on are the one of an asteroid hitting the um, Austrian Alps. There was a television program about that a short while ago. Fascinating. It had been forecasted to the day by the Sumerian astronomers using a planisphere and the methods they use to calculate the movements of these kind of objects, quite staggering. And we've been looking and talking all this last two days about how sophisticated observational astronomy was and how precise and accurate our surveyors uh, and uh, the people who um, were doing the technical things four, five, six thousand years ago. And we're going to follow that trail as well. Now, I'm starting with what we call the big event. This is the latest research, the best information um, from our top scientists about a major event at 10,500 BC. I put 10,750 because there were two big heat events here, and our problem is actually the carbon dating, because with the kind of problems we've had, we've had big movements up and down with the carbon, which means that our carbon dates always need correcting. And most people know that we've been pushing dates back further and further with more knowledge about dating methods.